hope is abundant in the Star Trek universe. The show is, of course, at its core, a hopeful view of the future. It has its fill of heartfelt, deeply moving moments that inspire the feeling that anything is possible. It is so earnestly optimistic. There's a plethora of scenes I could list when it comes to hope and Trek, and maybe one day I'll make a top 10 list, who knows? But I couldn't help but think of one in particular. Deep Space Nine's Take Me Out to the Hollow Suite. This episode is in the last season, the home stretch of the war before things really ramp up. The characters have all experienced loss, fear, anger, and worst of all, not knowing who they are anymore. Could they be the same people after all they had done? What will the war bring? The uncertainty of the future is something that's weighing on all of them. A Starfleet ship that also happens to be an all-Vulcan crew is docked at the station. The captain is an old classmate of Sisko's, and he challenges Sisko and his crew to a baseball game. That's it. That's the plot of the episode. You gotta love Star Trek sometimes. The crew forms and starts to practice. They're all dedicated to learning the game thoroughly and eager to play. But Sisko is getting progressively more hard on them until he cracks and throws Rom off the team. Midway through, we learn why Sisko is being so competitive and obsessed with this besides just loving baseball. Captain Solok, in their academy days, had beat him in a wrestling match that Sisko had angrily challenged him to, and has not let the incident go since, using every chance he can to use the example in papers and to prove his point that Vulcans are superior to humans for their ability to not experience emotions. Frustrated and humiliated, Sisko is determined to set him straight on his home turf. And frustrated he should be. Vulcans, though intensely trained on how to suppress and calm their emotions, to not make decisions based off of them do in fact still feel emotions. They are not void of them, and Sisko knows that. Hell, lots of people do. What Vulcans often lack is a deeper understanding of those emotions, due to simply suppressing them rather than exploring them. Later on in the episode, we even see the crew jabbing at Solok, teasing him for the fact that he is feeling and displaying emotions, whether he's stoic or not, and it's his actions that prove his own point wrong. Did I hear irritation? in that voice? Certainly not. That sounded positively defensive to me. With a hint of anger. And just a touch of jealousy. And a lot of bitterness. Are you always this emotional? And like Sisko explains, Solok is gloating. He's using every opportunity to remind him of his win, and wants to continue to humiliate him further. Having told Cassidy this story in confidence, she obviously goes to tell the rest of the Niners so they'd understand. And understand they do, vowing to do their hardest to prove Solok wrong. Niners! Niners! Yeah! <laughs> While putting in their absolute all, they quickly fall behind to the Vulcans. They're playing rough, and the crew knows it. Like Jake says, These guys are playing to win. Sporting doesn't enter into it. But they're happy nonetheless when they do get the little wins, Rom clapping excitedly for them too. When Sisko gets thrown out for touching Empire Odo, he has to leave to join Rom in the stands. Sisko is able to have a different view of his surroundings. His anger fizzles out until he just sees his friends having fun. And with his new perspective, he sees not a battleground, but a playing field, a place where he loves to be. Raising Jake on baseball games and playing catch, where he's laughed and cried, and all in the company of his favorite game. Sisko sees where he went wrong about this whole match, that while he wants to prove Solok wrong, in trying to do so he was proving that his anger and emotions consume him to make the wrong decisions, but instead taking a step back and reminding yourself why you're doing it to begin with. It's when he repeats his own words back to himself from the pile episode with the prophets. <laughs> Did you see that? That's what I love about this game. You never know what's gonna happen next. Every situation is different, huh? It looks like a lot of fun. Competition for fun. Every time I throw this ball, a hundred different things can happen in a game. But in the end, it comes down to throwing one pitch after another and seeing what happens. In fact, the game wouldn't be worth playing if we knew what was going to happen. And he's reminded not just why he loves life, but why he's on the station to begin with. Love, the people around him, his family, with them by his side, an old feud doesn't matter anymore. With them by his side, he can win. Sisko sends Rom up to bat because what's a baseball game without everyone having fun? Or even better, family playing baseball together. And in all of Rom's efforts, it's in his accident that he bunts the ball. Ah! 
Rom and Sisko have an interesting dynamic. For one, Rom was barely a nobody when the series started. Quark's brother and Nog's father. Once he got more material and his character fleshed out, he became fiercely independent, clever, and incredibly supportive of Nog, his wife Leela, and his friends. Even when he got kicked off the team, all he wanted for everyone was to have a good time instead of quit with him, and was genuinely enjoying himself while he was watching the match, cheering on those he loves. I think it's not a leap to say Rom admires and looks up to Sisko. He's also a single father, happens to be captain of the station, and has a healthy relationship with his son. Rom wants to emulate that, not just for Nog, but for himself. He forms a union, demands better treatment, gets a better job in a field that he loves and is good at, rather than one that he feels forced into. He gets confident, expresses his love for Leela, gets married, and he supports Nog, unapologetically defending his decision to join Starfleet and being a proud father for it. Sisko sees Rom in all of his unabashed enthusiasm for cheering on the match, no matter how they're losing or not, and he's reminded of the earnest hope at the core of why he gets up every day. For this, to be able to laugh with your friends and be at peace, no matter who wins or loses. This isn't a story of overwhelming success or an epic speech that inspires and speaks to the greater good. It's not a grand encounter with another species that proves humanity is striving to be better. And it's not an action-packed and emotional face-off with a villain that changes the course of the story forever. This is a story of family and the love between them. Rom bunts the ball and they score. Their only point of the game, but it doesn't matter because they did it together. And those aforementioned moments give me hope too, a lot of it, but this one is a moment of living, truly living, with the people closest to you. Hope in the comfort that no matter what was or will be, there will be people in your life who love you, care about you, support you, and celebrate you. Hope can be a lot of things, but sometimes one of the strongest places that you can draw hope from is simply the comfort and joy of those around you.